in ancient Rome. Here's a great view of something that is amazing. This time of year, we have the wisteria that are, are um, blossoming and it is beautiful. I wish you could smell it. So we're gonna talk about the month of April, what happens in history, what happens in the religious calendar, what happens in the imperial family. So April succeeding Mars month, which is March, is now the time of an opening. This is full on into spring, and we're gonna be focusing on a lot of female deities, primarily Venus. This is her month. So we start off the uh, first of April with the Veneralia, that's particularly focused on Venus Verticordia, the Venus that can turn men's hearts is the idea. So you're, you're, you're going to her, you're praying to her, you're offering to her, as well as Fortuna Virilis. And these goddesses are oftentimes paired together, Venus and Fortuna. And it's, it's a great way then to start this month and to hopefully obtain what it is you, you wish for. On the third, we have the Temple of Quirinus uh, celebrating its foundation. It's also on the third, famously, the state funeral of Tiberius. So he's dying outside of Rome in Mycenaeum, succeeded by Caligula, but then it takes him a while to get him in his body back into Rome to have that state funeral in the Roman form. Now, the weather is getting good in Rome today. It was getting good in antiquity. So you have two ludi, two big games that are being celebrated. The Ludi Megalenses from the 4th to the 10th and the Kerealia, the Ludi Kerealis from the 12th to the 18th. So as the weather gets better, you're gonna have more games. And of course, those games are primarily gonna be focused in what location? The Circus Maximus, because it's the largest venue in the city of Rome. Incidentally, on the 4th as well, the day of the kickoff of the Megalenses, it's the birth of Caracalla. He's born in Lyon. And then it's gonna be followed on the fifth with the festival of Fortuna Publica. So the public version of the Fortuna that can be uh, always associated with uh, fertility, but also with luck. So you always want fortune on your side. He's quite a popular deity. On the eighth, you have the temple of Castor and Pollux in the forum. Its foundation is celebrated. Also on the eighth, you have the assassination of Caracalla in Southern Turkey. He's out fighting more Parthian wars in the footsteps of his father doesn't go so well from him. Uh, he's assassinated by one of his, uh, one of his troops. And uh, during the time in which he'd actually like, gotten off his horse and was uh, urinating. So uh, not a good way to go, but definitely uh, recorded as such in the history books. Here he is with his famous scowl. Um, and uh, so two, two big moments, big events in the life of Caracalla. On the 10th, of course, we're in, in the midst of that Ludi Megalensis. You have the actual foundation of the temple on the Palatine Hill, brought over the cult statue of Magna Mater, or Kibele, was brought over from Mount Ida in Turkey during the Second Punic War. On the 11th, it's the birthday of Septimius Severus and Leptis Magna. And of course, that is the father of uh, Caracalla, uh, who had a very important uh, dynasty. Uh, and this is after the... Uh, demise of the Antonines, the suicide, the, the assassination, excuse me, of uh, Caracalla. Then on the 12th, you begin the Caracalla, the Ludi Caracalla. So we're thinking about Ceres, Liber and Libera, their triad temple on the Aventine Hill, so nearby the Circus Maximus. And then on 238, you have Gordian II dying also on the 12th. So this is the Circus Maximus. This is all dealing with the celebration of the birthday of Rome. So they have these things going on in normal circumstances. Okay, what we would normally see would be parades and cherry races and animal hunts, and not so much the gladiator games and the Circus Maximus. Of course, the main venue for that is gonna be the Colosseum, but I thought at least it'd be fun to show you, to give you a sense of that excitement and drama uh, that takes place uh, when we do celebrate in the Circus Maximus still today, though typically and traditionally at this point, on the birthday of Rome on April 21st. And we're gonna to get to April 21st in just a moment. So from the 15th to the 18th, we have uh, uh, on the 16th, Masada falling in 73, ending the Jewish war in 1669 there on the 16th of uh, April 69 CE is the 
beginning of the Teles' reign, one of the four emperors, the year of the four emperors, uh, ultimately to be um, superseded by uh, Vespasian, who does win the Jewish war. And then we have this uh, gentleman, Gratian, uh, whom you might not be so familiar with. Here's a, a statue attributed to him in Trier. And he's one of these emperors at a really tough time uh, in the empire. He's going to co-rule with his brother, his half-brother, Valentinian III, having initially uh, co-ruled with his father, Valentinian I. And he'll spend a lot of his time fighting along the Rhine and the Danube. And he's not, you know, we're not talking about emperors anymore that are based in Rome. He's in Trier, he's in Mediolanum, which is uh, Milan. And that's ultimately where he will be buried. And if we want to look for Gratian in, uh, in the city of Rome, we want to go to, let's say, the, the last uh, rebuilding of the Pons Cestius, uh, which has his name on the uh, dedicatory inscription. 21st then is the birthday of Rome, Romulus and Remus, are obviously associated with the foundation myth, and it's of course Rome, Rome that's founded by Romulus, when he goes to the Palatine Hill and gets the sign, takes his augury and gets the sign from the gods, uh, with the number of vultures that pass overhead. It's also the time, say the Romans, of the Parilia festival, honoring the goddess Pales that lives on the Palatine Hill. And when we look at Ovid, who's a great source of the religious festivals in Rome for the first uh, several months. He didn't complete his uh, epic poem calendar uh, because uh, he's exiled out to um, the Black Sea. But we do have uh, April and we do have a description of the Perilia and it's really about uh, fumigating and cleaning out the stalls and, and treating your animals well as much as, of course, it also is a time of founding the city. And when we talk about the life of Ramius and Remus before they found the city, they're shepherds. So they're tending their flocks. They're taking care of them. So you see how this all nicely ties in and it's all associated with the Palatine Hill where ultimately Romulus is gonna be founding the city of Rome according to Roman tradition. When? 753 BC, April 21st. So here's a fun view of something that sometimes happens in the Roman Forum. We see uh, women dressed up as Roman matrons. We see some Vestal Virgins. We see some Praetorian Guards. We're actually in the Atrium Vestae, the home of the Vestal Virgins. And uh, no human sacrifice, no animal sacrifice, but we're burning some incense. So it's a lot of fun. This is Gruppo Storico Romano, and we look forward to a time in which this can happen again in the near future. Okay, moving on to uh, April 23rd, uh, we have the Vinalia and the Robigalia, and they're both recorded as we can see here on this uh, panel, which is the famous marble calendar recorded now preserved in a Plaza Massimo, uh, for which we have a great video on Ancient Rome Live. Uh, Vinalia is uh, also celebrating Venus, but it's all about wine harvest uh, and tending the tending the um, the vineyards. And the the um, the twenty fifth is Robigalia, and you can make out the Latin here. It's happening where on the fifth milestone of the Via Claudia, uh, Via Claudia, and it is a veneration of Robigus, and Robigus is the god that you appeal to to ward off any kind of pestilence on your crops. The 26th is the birthday of Marcus Aurelius in 121. The 27th and 28th, the Romans celebrate the Ludi Floreae, which is uh, focused on the Temple of Flora on the Aventine Hill overlooking the Circus Maximus. So where's most of the activity taking place? In the Circus Maximus. It's gonna be extended to six days in the Imperial period. On the 28th and 357, Constantius II famously arrives in Rome for his only visit, and there's a great description of that and how he's in awe of uh, the Pantheon and in awe of the uh, form of Trajan and, and the Colosseum and so forth. Um, but interestingly enough, it's his, only, it's his only visit and it's a short stay, and more of his time actually is spent 
in years really spent in Mediolanum, uh, which is uh, Milan. So it's not that far. And you think that the guy would have come much more frequently because it's such an amazing city, but ultimately, you know, Rome is just less and less important. And it just is underlined by the fact that uh, the, the big deal is that Constantius II makes his short trip down there, but it's a one-time event, one-time affair. Also on the 28th, it's uh, in 32, uh, it's the birthday of Otho, who was born in Ferentium. And on the 30th, so we're getting to the end of April, uh, it's the official end of the great persecution of Christians that had been begun by Diocletian uh, many, many years before. So at, at this point, uh, Diocletian's uh, long since deceased, and we have then the official end of this activity. 